This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast where we get geeky talk tech live from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Myself, a video producer, podcaster here in the area, uh, collecting a fine collection of people. Some in the studio, some not like John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire joining us here from his secret lair in Dormont, PA. How's it going? I need to move to the basement, so I'm actually like in a layer. <laughs> no, I, I like I'm, this I'm because more, I'm more high above Dormont. I like this because like <laughs> you, you have like kind of the window effect like we do, but yours is just you look down on the street and you see cars pass by uh, from time to time over there. So in, in my undisclosed location, what is that green light? Is that downtown or is that like a power converter or something outside on, on a pole? Oh, do you see little dots? Yeah, oh, no, no, just a little oh, green dot over. Over there. So those are the uh, star burst lights or whatever. Instead of putting lights on our house for Christmas, we have the oh. the, the star shimmer lights the or whatever they are. Easy way to Christmas. I see how it is. Yes, mm-hmm. and they're, they're on they're on the good old uh, Apple or HomeKit stuff. So I, they're course, all automated because of of course they are. Because <laughs> yes. even even Chilla's Christmas is in the future. Uh, <laughs> also with us in studio, not not from. Newcastle, PA, this this <laughs> week. She's a sales and marketing director over at the Scare House. Katie, dude is the Dutters. Hi, everybody. Hey. hey. Can you pull the mic a little closer to you, please? No. Love, love the mic. Love, love the mic. I'll sit closer to there it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the exact opposite. I'll move How are me. you doing this week? I'm glad you, you made it back. Yes. And you're not using a printer box as your stand again. That was amazing. <laughs> I love that. Re- that's a wonderful beast, that printer. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, one sexy p- printer beast. <laughs> one sexy printer, printer beast. beast. We got a show title early here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And we got a newbie this this week, guys. Bra- Brian Conway joins us. The real journalist amongst us. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's a pleasure to be here and beat you. Any excuse I have to come out here and eat some of your uh, delicious tacos. And I've had a taco across the street from Las Palmas, and I've had a slice from Slice on Broadway. It's just, can't get any better. You're, you're like the second or third person. I was like, I'm going to go get tacos. I was like, well, we got our sponsor pizza. And they're like, well, I'll have some of that, too. But I need to get a taco while I'm here. So it, it's it's the full taste of Beachview experience, I guess. I, I know people are talking about there's like, this uh the some philly challenge where you take like a big slice of pizza and you put like a philly cheesesteak inside of it and you eat it all at once you can maybe and do like go a directly be- to the hospital you could do a beach view challenge and take the slice and then put the taco inside and wrap it up and Ooh. eat it all together oh that sounds and if there's great. some way to deep fry it then it'd be really a pittsburgh thing yeah yeah it just fl- fries and coleslaw uh, <laughs> but anyways you, you write for several publications of course where, where yes. can people find you out there um so i am a freelance journalist here in pittsburgh um mm-hmm. i've was a city design editor at Next Pittsburgh for a while, and now I do more freelance work uh, for Next Pittsburgh as well as for a public source and investigative outlet uh, right next door to us uh, in Allentown neighborhood of Pittsburgh. I say us because I know Mike from uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh Cooperative, and then I do other freelance uh, city paper, other uh, outlets around town. So, mm-hmm. yeah, keeps me busy. Uh, we, the last project that we had a chance to work together on was the Handmade Arcade, where we get to, That's right. we got to throw you out there as our host as we covered... <laughs> Like remotes, like like you know those, you know, chilly. You know those. You know, we always watch those videos every year of them just going around to CES and talking to a lot of the vendors and and mm-hmm. gadgets and stuff. We basically did that at Handmade Arcade with a remote camera, and I, I was live switching and bringing mm-hmm. it up on Facebook back at the at the uh, I guess the command center for work right. hard there. <laughs> it was kind of yeah, it was kind of fun that we could we could do that. I know you had a lot of fun uh, uh, talking with everybody, and it was a blast. And it's that's one of the things that's great about being a member of this work hard Pittsburgh cooperative is you know it's it's hard to make the ends meet as just a freelance journalist, a freelance whatever mm-hmm. it might be, as I'm sure so many of you guys know. So being part of this digital cooperative, there's a lot of freelance opportunities that come 
come up that are fun, like this Handmade Arcade live stream that we did. I got to go around and talk to local artisans and vendors and see what they were hawking and learn about the uh, artisan community in Pittsburgh and see what they had to share. So it was a great afternoon. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, so go check out that and um, check out, uh, of course, Work Hard Pittsburgh. Uh, I think there's a little bit of membership drive going on right now, too, there is. if you're interested in becoming part of that. So Join us. There's, it's 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 more of a process now than it used to. Yeah. Is, so. We have to run the place now that we're cooperative. Exactly. We thought it was a great idea, and then we realized, oh, wait, we actually have to run this oh, as Oh, members. wait, we actually have to like vet some people now and everything. I, myself, I'm also a co-op uh, member owner as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so, you know, so we, we both have kind of a stake in that. So yeah. it's, it's kind of fun to be part of something new like that. Yeah. So, well, let's get into our awesome things. But first of all, uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Music. Video versions on the YouTube and Facebook pages for AwesomeCast. And, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.awesomecast.net, 7 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, that takes you over to our Facebook Live for the awesome cast these days thank you to our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com uh you can uh, see this show replayed over there saturday mornings at 9 a.m and also rivers edge show and give a shout out to them uh we i was on there actually at uh, 10 o'clock this past week and you can check the video on their facebook and everything for river talk uh talking about 12 years of wrestling mayhem show that we're celebrating this week a lot of fun all, as always going in and being a part of that show and also our friends at the 405 media.com that are um that are, are rebroadcasting us at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time, five days a week. I have enjoyed the last week just getting that tweet every day of double dongle dutters uh, <laughs> <laughs> popping up from our last show yes. title and sharing that out. It just pleases me when we get a good show title. And also, I love that those show, those titles are right next to like political talk. On this network, and uh, I, I hope I, I hope they enjoy the flavor that we've been bringing them uh, lately, uh, at least for people that land on their site. Thank you, of course, to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. If you would like to join us at the $1 fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor Show. Of course, he joined us on the end of the year episode, as well as Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level. He gets the awesome cast gold. And, of course, we got other levels, the uh, $10 and $20 executive producer level. Yeah, you guys get things like State of the Show and become a, a bigger part of the production and, and, and kind of the decision making of the show as well. Again, patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let get let's get into let's get into our awesome things of the week, but I guess we have to talk about a not so awesome thing. <laughs> Katie, what I'm so like, mad. like this I, I, I'm not gonna steal your thunder on what was written in the <laughs> document. I'm so mad. My double dongle failed me. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've, I've learned the Was value. it a double dongle with a French swirl? <sighs> it's stupid. <laughs> what I, used to, what I, I read the description of the double dongle versus what the actual double dongle was. And this is, please, let's backtrack for a moment. <laughs> let's for talk people, about my double dongle. <laughs> uh, for people that didn't catch last last week's episode, the double dongle is for. Um, I, was, I, I, I got an iPhone X. I've got the lightning thing happening here. So, hey, no headphones. Wanted to do a podcast last week from uh, with my headphone going, ah, nowhere to plug this in. This sucks. So I have one on my in my gym bag that I use with my headphones. So I was like, oh, I should order another one. So during the show, I was looking for one. And there was a super cool one that was like, oh, we do audio and lightning thing. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. Let's do this thing. So I ordered it and it was one of their i don't know amazon's deals i forget what they're called so i was like this is super cool and then i get it and the description made it sound like audio jack and lightning port actually it's a lightning port splitter so if you could tell me what i need a lightning port splitter for i'd be so you can so you can plug in your converted so you can plug in the dongle that apple gave you and charge the device at the same time that does me no good (laughs) That's not the that's not the double you needed. <laughs> that's the wrong dongle. <laughs> you had, you, My you dongle had, bits. You had uh, you had two female lightning ports, and you needed a lightning. You needed a female lightning and a female. What is that? Eighth inch din. Audio. What do they call the headphone? I think it's just the audio. Yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything exciting. Yeah, just the eighth inch jack, right? Yeah. Yeah. You but, need an eighth inch. You need a female eighth inch and a female lightning port. Yes. Not two female lightning ports. Yeah, that's not good. So now you need another nine ninety nine dongle. 
to plug into your double <laughs> dongle. I'll just like have, I'll come into the studio and you'll just see this phone and it'll be like, burr, 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 burr. Uh, it, it's like funny a family tree. I watched the uh, there was a Samsung commercial in front of one of the movies I watched last week and and it was like the you know my friends doing all this with their phone and then here's like me watching something with all the dongles hanging off <laughs> so I can do all the stuff I need to do and just like looking longingly at the other person's phone you know so it's. It, yeah, <laughs> it, my my double dongle disappointed daughters. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh boy, some major alliteration. Yeah, I yes. love alliterations. <laughs> so yes. so again, not so awesome. Yeah. But hopefully, people learn to make sure they they get the proper proper dongle yes. out of this. Confirm it's, that the picture and the words match. Because oh, okay. You, apparently, I got the picture and not the words. Oh, okay. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> and that was an Amazon. Yeah, yeah, they get weird. I, I, I've, I've gotten um, um, uh, hubs that insisted that they were like I was looking for a FireWire hub, and it said FireWire, but it was completely just a USB hub. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, that's really cheap for a FireWire hub. I'll spend ten bucks on that, and it's just like, yeah, it's all USB. So it's like, that's not what that said. You, you know, it's yeah, no, it, it gets funky. Also, don't buy a da- a Apple power adapters on Amazon. Ooh, I that see. is a really bad idea. Yeah. Um, and they, they last like a week. I, I, I've tried a couple. They and... all cut, according to the reviews, they all catch on fire, <laughs> which is terrifying because I've looked to do that and yeah, I'm like, yeah. look, I, I will buy Apple through Amazon. Yeah, Apple. yeah. And because they look like it, there's nothing that indicates it's not really an mm-hmm. Apple brand and then you get it and you're just like, this box is a little too brown and I'm I'm used to for an Apple device, right? That sounds really bad out of context, but but but, but it is. It's just like, this is yeah. this is not the Apple experience. Then you look and there's like, there's no Apple on the side of this. And uh, it doesn't work after a week. Or my couch is on fire, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. So, Again. So to counteract, yeah. I bought something. And it's exactly what I expected it to be. Um, and it's... Are you ready for this? Wait, drum roll. I paid five dollar for five dollars for a uh, VR helmet. What? Look at that! Look at that right there. This is a Walmart branded. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I uh, had the uh, misfortune of finding myself in a Walmart over the holiday season, and I was and and I was I was always interested to go through the electronics department mm-hmm. just to be like what. What are the common people getting? Um, and there's a VR section at Walmart, you guys. It's the future. It is the, the VR future. section at Walmart. So you can find things from the five dollar face thing that this is. It's basically just a Google cardboard, um, and you know it opens up. Your phone goes in. Go get some cardboard apps, and you're watching VR, right? So you're you're good to go. Uh, my my cardboard was starting to fall apart, so I was like, oh, I'm due for something new. And this is a lot cheaper than like the twenty dollars for the build your own cardboard set that I got that had a head strap, which most of them didn't. Um, but if you go look through the section, like it's a bunch of headsets like this, some a lot better. Um, this, starting at five dollars for this one, and it's the on brand that's, that's the Walmart brand, right? Um, it does not have the button for cardboard. Like there's usually a washer and a magnet and like a little NFC chip, and that inter- mm. that's your interaction for menus and stuff for cardboard apps. You don't have that, mm. so you can't play like full on like games that require any interaction other than a head move. Mm. Um, so that's okay. I paid five bucks for it, um, but then there's like like twenty, thirty, fifty dollar units, and then they come with. I think the big thing is they're, they're probably better builds and everything, but they also come with certain apps. Mm-hmm. Like one for like thirty dollars came with like a first person shooter game or something. You know, something off brand, you know. And there's other ones that come with this little cube and they're doing like some AR stuff and everything. So so Chilla, you know the conversations we've had on this show where I was like, Hey, look, VR is gonna be completely accessible to people in a certain way, right? This is kind of that coming to pass, isn't it? Yeah, and I saw I saw the cube. I almost picked up the cube because that that cube thing yeah. where like you play with it. The, the um, I saw that at Target right before Christmas, and I'm like, oh, that looks like it could be fun. Uh, I'm surprised they don't put like a shelf with Bluetooth controllers right next to the that that are also five dollars. Well, well, not not five dollars, but you can find um, the Steel Series ones um i know the ones that i like the one i got for the apple tv and you have to get the different one like one for apple tv one for android like it's different bluetooth or something um compatibility so um 
I yeah, so they they did have those there, and they had one that looked like the Oculus controller, the Oculus Gear controller, um, for but I think it's for another sound like a different platform that they were trying to do. Like was the, it, wait a minute, hold on, let me bend down. Mm-hmm. Here. Oh, oh, you, oh, he has one. Was it, was it like this one? Yeah, yeah. Well, it looked like yeah, it looked like that one, but it was not a, like a Samsung brand like that. Okay, so because this one is for the Oculus. Yeah, this I, is the Samsung Oculus one. Yeah, and that's that's for the gear, right? Yes. So that's for like the Samsung Gear, you know, phone in your headset and, situation. And I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing this would work because it's. I think it's just a Bluetooth device, which it's out of batteries. And then here I am trying to put this on over my headphones. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it, you know for five dollars, it's a nice build. You know, uh, more than I expected. You know, and it, it fits kind of snugly on your head. You can adjust the uh, the the. You know, eye pieces. Although, if you have di- if you have different, um, um, you know, uh, problems with your eyes, one can get closer than the other. So I don't know what that's going to do for you when you're doing the roller coaster <laughs> app. But uh, you know, it, it, pretty straightforward. Just a plastic build. Um, you know, a nice nice padding on the front of it. You know, more so I thought like kind of more comfortable than the gear. But of course, I have the first SDK gear. That chilla kit. Yeah, yours is a bit heavy. Yeah, mine's going to be a bit heavy for a bit. And it keeps overheating. So, um, But I think that's just because I have an old one. But anyway, so, so again, you know, something if you just want to watch some VR movies or something, like, you know, and there's even like Sheets has them for like 20 bucks. You know, it, it, it's it's just like literally everywhere. Yeah. But um, so there you go. If you want to get into like kind of that cardboard thing, like in that cardboard works on basically, I think basically any phone. Hmm. At this point, if you have an app store through Google or iPhone, you can probably use one of these and, and start getting into that, that VR experience. So, and, and this, yeah, I think I think this is where the the video definitely comes in handy and makes it a pretty much accessible to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And um, at least you get some quality lenses that are properly mounted. Right. I haven't had much experience with VR. I feel like the only time I've ever played is I'll go down to Victory Point or LFG or one of these uh, gaming yeah, places yeah. in town, and then I play some super immersive uh, job simulator or Rick <laughs> yes. and Morty game, yeah. and that's been my only experience. So with a five dollar unit like that, I could you're saying I could actually watch uh, sort of immersive videos with yes. that. You, I mean, download things like Within or go through the YouTube VR stuff. You can mm-hmm. watch the the Scarehouse video we did, for oh instance, on there. It sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yes. not at all. <laughs> Uh, how are you with clowns in The Exorcist? Yeah, are you cool with that? <laughs> Ooh, I didn't watch The Exorcist. I went to school in D.C. I went to American University, and we actually knew uh, at Georgetown there's like a famous set of steps where I guess like the priest got thrown down at the end. Spoilers if you haven't seen this 30-year-old movie. <laughs> but uh, you could go there and actually sit. Yeah, <laughs> You're going to watch it on VR tonight. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 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 No way. I'm sad. I, I don't think there's a, an app. Because Chilla, what I wanted was because it's kind of hard to input my password for Netflix on the uh, Gear VR because um, it's ridiculous. And uh, so I was like, I was hoping that there was like a, a cardboard viewable version of uh, uh, Netflix on uh, uh, iPhone, like I, like or Hulu or something like that. Because mm-hmm. like I would use that. Like it was just like oh, I just want to sit here in bed and watch, but I don't want to like bug Missy right mm-hmm. with the light and everything. You know, it, it's just like let's let's you know have that immersive let's, you know to myself experience let, let's 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 sit in the same room but pretend we're nowhere near each other yeah absolutely yes. you know like true relationships work right <laughs> <laughs> need the space yeah exactly so but no you know it's kind of a step forward for that all right and that, and that, yeah and that brings up a good point too i wish that that's something that i think samsung and a lot of these people could work on is how do you do some additional input without having the, the 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 actual device on that's that's the one thing i do like about oculus is you can at least update all the apps um without having to go in and and run them and, and do a bunch of stuff with the headset on hopefully they can get to some of that bare bones configuration stuff or being able if i already have netflix on the device and configured can it pull my credentials or whatnot right from there would be nice yeah sometimes you can do that through like the oculus kind of like companion app but it doesn't mm-hmm. seem to do that with like netflix and hulu so thankfully i know my hulu password i was able to use that <laughs> but anyways um all right brian what is your awesome thing of the week so i am not quite that tech savvy um despite 
being a member of a digital freelance D- cooperative. Despite, despite being surrounded <laughs> by it every... I mean, just the tech on the desk next to you by Rag and Haggerty it has to be... It's overwhelming. <laughs> I, he, he spends half the day with a VR headset on. I don't know what he does in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you want to be by yourself, yeah, it's hard working in a co-op around people sometimes. Yes. I need to get like one of those big ostrich head pillows that just like people wear on intercontinental flights where they just block out all the light and the sound and then you just go into this little ostrich head cocoon i think it's i would get a little more work it's done your that own way. personal cone of silence or i could get a five dollar vr headset <laughs> there you it's go hey over at walmart <laughs> yeah but so like i just got um my sister and her fiance uh very generously gave me a ps4 for christmas which was like a very unexpected gift but that nice. sort of gives you a sense of like where i'm at in the scope of technology oh, dude i just got an xbox one this past year and i barely so, used it so. yeah so it's all new to me so i was thinking all right what am i gonna do what's gonna be new and awesome and then i was thinking uh Music. I listen to a lot of uh, rock music, specifically psychedelic rock, um, sort of uh, bands that emulate that, you know, late 60s Pink Floyd, Beatles sort of sound. And uh, one of my favorite bands are from Australia. They're called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I'll say that again. It's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And like late in 2016, they told all their fans, hey, we're going to release five albums in 2017. And no one thought they were going to do it. Everyone thought it was like, like a big full length sound. albums. Five full length LPs. And they released like one in uh, February. And then they released like another one in June. And then like one more came out and one more came out. And then people were waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally on December 30th, they released uh, it was called Gumboot Shoe. And it was their fifth album of the year. And I highly recommend it. Uh, they were just named, I think, like Band of the Year by Consequence of Sound, one of the bigger I, music I'm blogs. I'm loving this music video I found yeah. for them. But it's this uh, frenetic seven piece from Melbourne. And they just play this like sort of loose, unhinged, psychedelic rock and each like the one album has more of like a jazz feel to it one of them has sort of like that grateful dead psychedelic blues feel it's great stuff to listen to <laughs> so i highly recommend it and that has been on my playlist recurring recently so yeah that, that yeah my, you, uh, somehow awesome somehow we we uh uh trip the echo and, <laughs> and i think she was telling us about that band too so <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but uh, no, this, this looks great. This is awesome. Yeah, they're exceptional. I think this uh, one of the albums that they released this year, they actually uh, like withdrew or they didn't claim any of the copyright claims that they could have. So it's like completely available to the public. So nice. if you need any like new intro or outro music, you might be able to put some King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. Nice. So completely, it's a completely open, creative commons-y, you know, kind of thing. All that. For so, one of them, at least. The other four, yeah. I think you have to figure, you know, they still retain it. But for that one, I guess they're feeling generous. One of my favorite, um, so, you know, I, I listen to a lot of my music on Spotify, and I just sort of assume that if a band's on Spotify, like, that is all of their albums. And mm-hmm. so I listened to them on there, and I saw that there was, like, two other albums that I really liked that I didn't even know existed from them. So I was listening to that, and one of my favorite comments was, uh, the top comment for one of their albums was, came for the King Gizzard, stayed for the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> And that's uh, definitely, I think, what uh, everyone else has experienced. That pretty much well. sums it up for you, right? Yeah, that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So go check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Like, even Google Music, like, I, there's um, bands that I have listened to for years, and, like, the first album isn't on there, you know, mm-hmm. even though it's well, it's pretty much as widely released. Like, it, it's really, it's same, you know, same uh, uh, record label and everything, and, and it's just like, well, you know, I have it from my collection, but... I didn't rip it right, you know. So you know, yeah, I feel like, like that. with uh, bands makes so little money off a lot of these streaming services too. I feel like the imperative or like the desire for them to go and put their music on these streaming services right. just really isn't there. If we're gonna get you know like half a penny per stream or whatever it might be, so who knows? If that has something but to man, do discovery! Not. I can't. I can't believe how many bands I've discovered. Over, and I'm not going to go buy everybody's album, and I'm at least mm-hmm. contributing something to them, right? By by doing that, yeah, you it's know? never been easier to get into new music than it is today. Yeah, like anytime I discover somebody local that's mm-hmm. on there, mm-hmm. I make sure I try to listen to them a bit more to give them, a, you know, give them a, give them another like you know tenth of a penny at least, you know, towards whatever, right? You know, they, they, they supporting something, something, so, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. All right, and tell us how Chill is in the future. What is your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week, and it's something I've been waiting for for a while. Um, I'm, I was actually about to replace some of my earlier home automation equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, Belkin, the maker of Wemo smart home products, um, when they released their original uh, Wemo equipment, which I think consisted of, there's the, one of the devices you could put uh, plug into the wall and then plug something into it. Um, there's a motion detector. 
and then I actually have a light switch that's uh, hooked up for my back porch. Um, the problem was, is they work well. They work great, actually, with uh, Google and Amazon. They do not meet the security spec for Apple HomeKit. Um, and people have been wondering for some time, what are they going to do about this? Um, as part of CES announcements, they have come out with a new hub. Um, some people may not like the concept of the hub because it is an extra device. You do have to plug it into your network. Um, it's a small, um, uh, smaller than if you folded your cell phone in half over over on top of itself. I mean, it'd probably be about that big um, or the size of, I don't know, um, can't think of something that's about that that's about that size. Two packs of all Altoids uh, mints. I don't know. Um, well, it's been a while. It, it's been a while since I've had an Altoids <laughs> mints uh, uh, comparison for a technology device. Yeah, um, four packs of matches. I, I don't know. Um, for you smokers out there, <laughs> um, or arsonists, it, 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 yeah, arsonists. <laughs> um, but it does plug into your network, so it's going to need a, a, a wired Ethernet connection. But then it will actually relay um, any of your HomeKit type stuff to any of your Wemo devices. Um, and the cub actually only costs forty dollars. And I don't know how they got my email address and know that I wanted this. Maybe they're watching the show, but I got a forty percent off coupon in my email. Okay. Um, almost uh, at the exact same time they were making the announcement on Monday. Um, so I was, I'm super excited. I'm going to be ordering this. Hopefully it's not back ordered um, and picking this up so I can continue to use all my Wemo equipment, potentially even pushing me back down the Wemo uh, rabbit hole uh, to get some more of their equipment. Cause I do like their equipment. And so, so Wemo is kind of a, a, a line and standard, right? That, that is compatible with home kit just to, Kind of clarify there, right? So it's, it's a home automation equipment made by Belkin. It was not until you add this little device in. It's not HomeKit compatible. Oh, okay. So this, this is the compatible. It's only compatible with Alexa and Google. Oh, good. You said that, and not us here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so yeah, this this adds the HomeKit functionality. So now Siri can take over. Um, I'm, I'm just firing up everybody's. Uh, personal assistance but um th this will let me let me integrate it with all my siri actions by the way because this is something i noticed this week listening to some other podcasts they they make pains to reverse the uh the echo keyword but everybody says siri and katana like cortana. all the time cortana it, i guess i guess you have to say like hey or something don't you yeah mm -hmm. there's there's so there yeah it's like the it's hey versus, and then versus the echo AI. is just the word yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I guess that's the big thing. So, all right. Well, there you go. So, so that that's your bridge for that. That if you have a deal on Wemo equipment, uh, look out for that uh, bridge. So, and let's know how that uh, turns out for you there. Definitely, we'll do. We still need to do a tour of Chilla's like home of the future at some point here. Sure thing. Wait, wait, wait till the basement's finished. And wait till the we'll basement tour. <laughs> <laughs> This tech house. We should, had that idea a couple March. years ago. So. It's, it's, it, we're, we're, we're estimated for end of March. So. End of March is, yes. is, is your launch window. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, in the, in the meantime, the only launch window you need for pizza is that delivery uh, window. And that's for our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcast. Pizza. Oh, no. I just went off the rails. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza right here in Beachview, right along the tracks here on Broadway as we are, as well as in Carnegie, PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and East Liberty is their latest uh, is their latest uh, uh, open place. I still need to go. I've driven by several times, but I still need to stop in. Where is that place. location in East Liberty, their new spot? Uh, it's on Penn? I believe. I think it's Penn and Elwood, maybe. No, no, no. Center and Penn, maybe. I get my rows mixed up over there. Let's put you on the Are spot. Are you quizzing me? Are you quizzing <laughs> yeah. me right now? Is I'm that what's fact happening? Checking. You're fact checking. As a journalist, you know, if I, I click, need to fact check. If I click the damn link, I'll find out, right? <laughs> um, that's actually uh, 6004 6, Center Avenue. Excellent. There you go. As long as they're expanding across the city, that's the important thing. There you go. Waiting for that Allentown location, right? Yeah, if if they're listening, slice guys down the road. If you could hear us, please. <laughs> and they do. That. Please. 
we could use another uh, Warrington location. <laughs> there you go. I think, yeah, the, the, you're losing pizza places out there. This one was like weirdly out or something like that. Yeah, they're open like four hours a day for yeah, four days yeah. a week. Yeah, we need we need pizza places with real hours and good pizza in Allentown. Because there's a lot of people in Allentown that could use some pizza. There's a lot of meetings that could use some pizza mm-hmm. up there. Just saying, friends at Slice. Hey, tell them if you want them in Allentown or whatever neighborhood you're in over at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. And uh, check them out on Facebook and Instagram as well. It's fun to see their little creations uh, with dough. So um, they made a Hello Kitty pizza yes. and dough doll for, uh, for Katie's birthday at one mm-hmm. time. That was great. They're awesome. Yes. All right. Let's get into some other awesome things going on. Uh, first of all, uh, a shout out to our friend Brian uh, Crawford over at the River's Edge. Because um, uh, I didn't, I don't know if this is the same one that I've seen before, but there's going to be a Pittsburgh VR meetup coming up. Mm. So shout, an event shout out for you guys locally here. It's going to be over at Ascender. I've been over there for some events. And uh, we've actually, we've talked to them over at Awesome Chat. Uh, so it's a really cool space of nothing else. And, uh, you know, it, it, I've attended one of these over at Looking for Group. Mm-hmm. And it was great. To, you know, at that point, it was a bunch of um, developers and enthusiasts and, and everything. Like one guy that we know was an app developer. And he got like a he just came back from a Samsung conference and they had given him like a Gear VR and a phone mm-hmm. so he could start developing for it. You know, so, uh, you know, th- those kinds of things or if you're, you know, want to check it out, I think they're going to have some on hand as well. Uh, they're actually going to have Ralph Vid- Viducino. Vuduccio? Yeah, let's go that way. From uh, Carnegie Mellon there uh, to give a brief talk about what's happening with VR CMU's uh, ETC. Um, so that's going to be worthwhile. And some people from Shell Games. Uh, so this is this is going to be a really cool event for you guys to go t- to. It's uh, January 12th at uh, 5.30. Jeez, I need to see if I can swing out to this thing <laughs> at this point. Uh, so go check it out uh, and uh, look that up on your Facebook events. Just look for the Pittsburgh VR meetup and you'll find it out there. I'm going to show up with my $5 Walmart VR headset yeah! and you're just going to laugh me out of the place. Just be like, hey guys, I'm one of you. <laughs> you know, you, you know now what you do is what you do, you turn this into a fashion statement, right? You just wear it on your head and walk in with it, right? You're like, what's up, guys? You know, like, I mean. like one of the Ghostbusters. Yeah, like one of the Ghostbusters, exactly. So, um, they, they are premiering a 360 music video there. So, ooh. You definitely make use of the headset. Maybe it's King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. Oh, if only. I, I, that, I, video, it, that video I saw, if that thing's in 360, that's, that would be great. That seems like the perfect kind of thing. Sick. I'm interested <laughs> to see the shell games because one of the games they're they're uh, demoing is I expect you to die. <laughs> oh, I played that. That was actually the first VR game I played over at Looking for Group. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Wow. You're in a car. It's basically a, a puzzle escape game. You're in a car in a plane. It's like you're a spy, right? You're, like you're James Bond, and mm-hmm. you've been captured and need to escape before um, it fills with gas maybe explodes or they dump you out of the plane. So that's oh. like a Bond villain quote, the I expect you to die, Mr. Bond. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like there's like a thing that comes on the old school radio and it says, Man, I expect you to die, you know? <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, go check it out. And thanks Brian for uh, passing that along as well. So, um, Chilla, I know you're keeping an eye on CES. Yes. A few things have caught my eye. Um, I don't know which one you want me to talk about. Whichever one has got caught your eye uh, uh, the most. So, so you have the the Lenovo one. So I'll do I'll do the 4K Android TV. So Westinghouse announced a couple new 4K TVs, all coming with Android um, built in. Westinghouse doesn't. I'm not going to lie. Westinghouse doesn't make the most beautiful panels in the world. Um, the person that reviewed this actually at CES said the the picture quality was, he called it nice, and he was fairly impressed. Um, it won't blow you away, um, but the colors were nice. The detail was great, um, and the build quality was, was good. Um, the, the key to this for me is it runs Android, so you have the entire Android um, Google Play Store at your disposal. Um, Google Assistant is built in. It has built-in Chromecast functionality, three HDMI ports, all for the mere price of three hundred and fifty dollars. Jeez! <laughs> um, it is it is a forty-three. The the, the three hundred fifty dollar version starts at forty-three inches. 
which is plenty enough room for or plenty enough size for any of my spare um, bedrooms or guest rooms. So, I love, is, I love, so now we know Chili's <laughs> standards. And we're like, well, 43 is good enough for the extra TV. I mean, it's like, that's my TV. Period. <laughs> But, but uh, so this is going to be coming out in Q3. So I'll definitely be picking up um, one of these unless something else comes out that's comparable. I've had my eye on the TCL. I think it's TCL um, the, uh, TVs. They have one that was 450 for the same size 4K, but it did uh, ultra. It did the UHD. The, it had the Dolby specs and, and, and some additional stuff on there mm-hmm. or did i'm sorry it did the uh hdr had the additional color spec for hdr um but i like the idea of this with android versus the tcl's do roku um so i'd much rather have the the google play store at my disposal mm-hmm. so so along with that while we're talking about the next tv or three you're gonna buy chilla uh, Katie has a recommendation for you, actually. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, of what what you should be picking up? It's a TV what, for above it, your is stove. Is it going to be more than three hundred and fifty dollars? Yes, it is. Is there seriously for this thing? I have no idea. They don't have a price on it. Okay. I'm assuming it's over three fifty. Okay. So, so what is this? Uh, it's on the front of a microwave. <laughs> no, it's it's just like a TV. Yeah, it's like a TV above your oven because that's where your oven should you. Look at this thing. Okay, so explain explain what I'm this surprised. is for the audio people here. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's so apparently they uh, GE's assuming that you know a good spot to put a television is right above, literally right above your oven, and it does look like it's built in to. Um, I don't know if there's a microwave behind it. I can't. I don't think it says anything about it, but it looks like it's got the range hood where you would you know the ventilation part of it, but it's a 27 inch screen uh, that you, you can use your voice. You can gesture with it apparently and um yeah you can watch some things on it and yeah, this is just fun I don't know. <laughs> video calls does it say do, does it say what what it does it run any like does it run some kind of version of google like like android because what where i'd be interested in this too is think about it you could have your recipe mm-hmm. of what you're cooking up there with a timer and some other stuff and you could you could really make use of that. I'm surprised. That's the one thing I am surprised about. Things like CES. There's a lot of kitchen type devices like this one, especially with Google Assistant built in. Google is running full force at CES, whereas I think we we saw a lot more out of Alexa last year. Um, Google Assistant's definitely taking over and being integrated. I think Lenovo has a tabletop device. It's not nearly as nice looking as this. Um, but, and, but things like this interest me. I just don't spend enough time in my kitchen or I'd have the $4,000 Samsung, uh, refrigerator with the built in cameras inside the refrigerator and the external door that has the 27 inch touch panel which we we tried to order food on when we were at the samsung <laughs> store in new york city by the way, <laughs> when we were up there well here so. here's how i'm going to sell it to you chilla it's not just a, it's not just a television it's a hub you can connect it to your smart doorbell so you're able to look and see when your guests arrive it also communicates with any ge connected appliances including washer dryer dishwasher refrigerator wall ovens and of course ranges so you can control all of. So things. I need to buy this and then replace so all of your appliances, <laughs> everything else. But that would see this would be nice though, because like when because my laundry is upstairs. Um. So if I'm downstairs cooking, I could see when my laundry's done. I could start the dryer. I like this idea. I, I'll take two and build a second kitchen. <laughs> see, see, I, I said it'd be multiple, didn't I? So there you go. <laughs> Hey, when he's the gadget guru, you know, he there's needs a down, to... There's a downward facing camera so you can do your own personal cooking show. Oh, nice. Oh, now everybody's going to get a cooking show. And I bet you it streams right to YouTube, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man, G, I, I don't ever think of GE as doing something multimedia this is like pretty this, high techy right? techy for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they've got something going on. They're just never... They've- at the forefront. They've been going after this market. They just came out with new, I sent, think some new light bulbs that are that are Wi-Fi enabled and maybe even have a speaker. Integ- yeah, they, they had the speaker integrated um, dome lights 
um, and they had so they had a bunch of stuff that they announced last week before CES. Um, so this just adds to that. I, I'm, I'm impressed with some of the older school companies like GE moving forward with this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I really like the the picture that they have that that uh, is at the top of that article. I, I really like kind of that layout diagnostic graph chart kind of thing where you could see looks like you can see one of the web cameras you can see what the temperature of the house is um as the appliance is up there i i like this this old tech house with chilla just got a new <laughs> install well chilla while you're making all that food while you're doing your <laughs> video show and you're <laughs> calling grandma i don't know whatever you do in the kitchen with this device um so samsung maybe maybe this is your your thing for maybe getting a samsung uh uh, fridge as well uh so bixby which is their i guess siri kind of thing over on samsung right uh so they're gonna be uh teaching bixby to count the calories in your food now this is something it's gonna be part of bixby vision where you take a picture of something and it, it kind of looks at food identifies it and and kind of you know, does the general, hey, this is an apple. This is what, how many calories an apple generally is. So it's going to be generic food data. So it's not going to be spot on, but at least it gives you an idea, right, uh-huh. uh, for things. It, it's not really ready for prime time, but also, you know, the Samsung has also been talking about how they want that, that Bixby virtual assistant to basically be on every product it makes. So I'm thinking that means fridges as well. Uh, so, or or stoves or whatever the case may be right because they make they make everything appliances don't they so yeah they make they make dishwashers they make washer dryer and they, they make refrigerator and they, they make, make your, stove. your samsung television is going to judge that fast food you got to watch uh <laughs> the super bowl with you know right so your, really, your, your phone's gonna buzz and say you need to get up and walk around more often yeah, exactly <laughs> so i mean they could do the ecosystem you know if the people are, i mean i think samsung is really like how everybody used to buy sony you know 30 years ago uh that they could kind of build around that for sure i'm curious I, I, with the, i know that things are going towards the internet of things and everything's interconnected and can talk to each other but is it going to come to a day when i'm not going to be able to buy an oven without a tv screen built <laughs> into it uh, I, I bet you that, that those devices. I, I think what this is going to do is just drive the prices of those devices way, way, way yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, you can pick those up at Dollar General in the future because <laughs> it'll be that low, right? Because there's always going to be people that you know. I still, you know, you know, remind there are still, pe- still people that do not have significant internet to take advantage of things like this, mm-hmm. right? Let alone things like Netflix. Um, mm-hmm. And those people still need to be served. You know, because there's there's people like that that are they're out in the middle of nowhere, have the money to spend on things like this, but there's just no access for them. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I don't think it's gonna be persistent, you know, but I don't think any of this stuff ever will be. Because somebody out there still got a flip phone. Somebody out there still got just the landline with the rotary. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I will say about Bixby that I really liked and actually got me using it was um just as an aside real quick, so on the Samsung device, you can hold down the home button area, the, the soft button for home, and it brings up Google Assistant. But you hold down the button on the left side of the device, and it brings up Bixby. Mm-hmm. Um, when you go into the Bixby interface, they've kind of uh, gamified it a little bit. So you can earn points based on what you've done with Bixby, but it kind of takes you, like you get 10, or I think when I did it, I think I got five points just for going through the tutorial and then the more you did the more points you got the more points you get you can trade it in for samsung devices or or whatnot um or credit in their app store so i I don't know i it got me really engaged with using bixby Mm. um the one thing i wish they would do is somehow partner a little more with some of the other app developers um to do some integration points there because you can do WhatsApp, but you can't do some of the other stuff, but it, it, it definitely makes it easy and nice to use and quick, quick to learn. Excellent. So uh, while we're in this kind of ecosystem of, of personal assistance and everything, uh, Katie, I think you have a story here about what Toyota is about to do. I'm going to say it. Toyota is going to put the a word in your, <laughs> <laughs> oh. your a lady friend, your a lady, your a lady. <laughs> 
<laughs> in your car now. Yeah. So it, and it's important. So so Echo is the device you get from Amazon. A lady that we're not going to say is the <laughs> like system, right? Yes. That that goes into other things that they're trying to get in all kinds of devices, right? Mm-hmm. So so what are, what are they going to what are so just generally like am I going to be able to ask a lady, uh, <laughs> a lady. like hey um. How is my mileage? How's my? Do I need an oil change? Things like that. It sounds like that, and like adding things to lists, and and getting like news updates, and okay. you know that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get that notification that my cat food came like while I'm driving down yes. the road. And cat is, food has arrived. <laughs> <you're>, yeah. <laughs> so what is that glow? Because there's always that like yellow glow that happens. So it's like oh something's at the house. Mm. <laughs> so um, and it says it's uh, it looks like uh, the support is going to bring beginning in uh, 2019. Yeah. So yeah, because I, I guess uh, I guess Ford had announced that they were going to begin testing last year, but they didn't mm-hmm. with uh, a lady, which is surprising because Ford is usually the one that's on the forefront of technology and cars. I have a 2012 car with an a aging Ford Sync that I don't think they do anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's a Microsoft base. It's mm-hmm. weird to have a mic- uh, made by Microsoft label in your car, <laughs> right? And it's the one without the screen or anything. I just yell, Bluetooth audio, please! <laughs> you know, and, and I yell a lot at my car. Missy can attest to this. Uh, so, yeah. But I mean, that's the extent of mine. I get to that so I can talk to S Lady. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so we're saying all these because this particular home assistant is in the studio now. Oh, and, and anybody listening, because uh-huh. you can listen to podcasts yeah. on a lady. Mm-hmm. And, and even if you say hmm, Siri, like it could, like I've listened to podcasts where they've said it and like, you know, you're in the shower and it's on an iPhone and uh-huh. it trips it. And I'm just like, no, stop, you know? Uh, so now this has been an ongoing problem for ever since Siri. Uh, but now um, since a lady's so good at listening, uh, to the point where we say certain wrestlers on the Wrestling Mayhem show, she starts tripping because their name is. Did she? Oh, I thought she went <laughs> or something. But now we're all like, "Don't let her hear you." I really should just unplug her during the shows. But anyways, it's kind of more fun this way. Now with your now with with her and Microsoft powering some of the cars, it can simultaneously blue screen and get your request wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh the whole car just goes. <laughs> when it was cold, no. When it was cold, I think my car did do the equivalent of blue screening when I turned it on because because <laughs> I think I get turned on and I was like, why don't I see any numbers? Oh no! <laughs> like anywhere, this is not okay. <laughs> so. The the one thing I'm wondering how they handle this, and it kind of bums me out. I, I wish they figured out either let you somehow tether your car to your phone or do something. Is a lot of these then require an additional over the top monthly fee because you're going to have to right. pay. You're going to have to pay for it to be connected. Um, I haven't seen where any of them actually. Uh, the ones I've seen don't come with a data plan per se because it's just shooting text. Uh, voice to text and text to voice back and forth so it's not a lot of data um i'm guessing the cars that are also wi-fi hotspots have some kind of limit on your data plan but uh, i'm guessing this is i guess if you're buying alexa or well it's a uh, lexus and form so it is uh, i don't know i guess if you're you're buying a car of this cost maybe you're not worried about the over the top cost mm-hmm. but you're going to be paying Paying a monthly fee to use this, in addition to your Amazon and your and your car loan and everything else. Mm-hmm. Just one more thing. It's just like mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if I'm ready to drop another ten bucks a month just so my watch can have internet, its own internet, right? Like that's been, mm-hmm. that's been like as many things as I already have on my phone plan, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I don't know if I can do that one extra thing. Uh, but Sheila, one thing I know that's been, I, I think you've been looking forward to, and we were kind of hoping was in that new iPhone and, and it didn't make it out, but a China company, uh, named Vivo, um, actually has put out a phone that, uh, or at least it was, it's at, it's at CES. So put out is maybe relative, but they had a hands on over at the, the verge. Uh, it is the first active tested in hands, um, fingerprint reader on screen so eight months ago i would have been super excited to read this and i know that people view me as the apple fanboy so i'm going to turn this over to dudders and ask for her opinion (laughs) oh no (laughs) um 
So, uh, Katie, how how much do you miss your fingerprint sensor, and how much more do you enjoy? Or maybe maybe you're not using Face ID. Um, how much more do you enjoy? face id okay so this is a trick question because i never had fingerprints <laughs> oh really so, uh, big loser and you had like a success right i had a six yeah six and i had fingerprint i thought so maybe i don't know i never set it up if okay I had it. okay maybe okay but it's okay so i do the the facial uh recognition because i think it's cool and i do talk to my phone a lot but like i find and, I, and i've seen a similar complaint online with it is doing things like if you're not that i'm using my phone when i'm driving but if i'm looking at you know, if I have ways or something up in my screen and I close mm. off my screen to get it back on, it's not, I can't get the angle of my face to it's not where it's right in front of me. Mm. So I'm like trying to put my password in awkwardly over on the side here. So you have to do that more than you did before. Yes. Cause okay. that's kind of, I find that to be a pain versus before it's only a problem when you had gloves on. Yes. Right. Because mm-hmm. it, like I got the gloves that, you know, are still sensitive and will work on the yeah. screen, mm-hmm. but that doesn't help when it's locked. And it's too fumbling to try to po- post it in with the, the little, you know, ends of my gloves that mm-hmm. never line up. And, right. and, and, and maybe that's because I don't drive nearly as much. That's where because he takes the, that good old tea. <laughs> when I wait for the train in the morning, it's so nice not to have to take off my gloves yeah. to get into my phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so that's where, and it it's it, it took one time of me having uh, uh, my my hat on. Um, in the morning to train face ID to, to continue to figure out it was me that mm-hmm. it's it, it just I, I don't know I don't want to go back to a fingerprint no I don't blame you because I this I love I love the fact that I just pick it up and it's like I hate you and then I love the notifications and things like that and it does not recognize me when I have a piece of pizza hanging out from my mouth though <laughs> I, didn't, I realized that the other day I was like does it know who I am and it's like no who are you so so basically we saw the problem of having a larger screen and taking that away but with, without solving the problem of the screen sensor, the, the screen uh, fingerprint sensor, so which actually is a forward moving technology. Future. So, yes. Yes. Your future I, I do, phone. I do think it's interesting how they're doing it because they're they're peering through the gaps in the pixels in the wow. OLED display. What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are they doing this with lasers? There has to be lasers involved, right? I don't know. Laser. Um, I don't know. I don't know how they're, they're. It just says optical sensor. Either way, this is. But but now this is a technology that while starting on a Vivo phone, I realized off the top of my head, I was like, oh wait, Vivo is what my TV brand is. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, but and they've been getting into phones in generally in the last couple of years. But now if they're if Vivo is doing this. You're going to start seeing these a lot of different places. Like the I, the idea of watching a sci-fi movie and like they have that desk in the you know big CEO corporate guy's office that like is the handprint reader in the glass. That is now a step forward, right? Where, where yeah, where I want this is in my iPad. <laughs> you just want to put your hand on the iPad to read, uh, or just the finger because yeah, and because the. I don't think I would like if they could do a full glass iPad, like edge to edge screen. Then how are you going to hold the iPad? Well, that's where Face ID has a problem. So when you authenticate with Face ID, you have to hold the phone portrait. Mm-hmm. It can't be in landscape mode. Mm. Um, so, and that's where I find myself with my iPad constantly rotating it, depending on what. I plan on doing once I authenticate into the iPad. Mm -hmm. So this is where I would like this and then the full edge to edge. And they figured it out with the phone. I mean, I have no problem not accidentally touching parts of the user interface and it's edge to edge. And it's no problem. Um, Even if they throw a face on, on uh, face ID on iPad, like that'll, well, that's where I'm, as long as they, as long as they fix the rotate problem. As long as they fix the rotate problem, mm. and that might be a two three point oh that they'll be able to do that too. So, but, but just just put this in there for now. I'll be mm-hmm. totally happy. All right. Uh, well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up the show. Here, uh, first of all, we need to welcome back uh, producer Missy's back, keeping my ass straight on the show. Yay! Yay! She just got in from a flight last night, and boy, are her arms tired. Yep, I did that. <laughs> 
Uh, Shaking her head now. <laughs> <laughs> she's there to disapprovingly look at my, con- uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, not like my comments. <laughs> so, <laughs> so good having her back and helping out with this uh, crazy little show we do. Brian Conway, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, guys, you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Brian Conway. That's Brian with one I and Conway with five. Why is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the internet <laughs> because someone took my handle years ago before i thought of it so i had to get clever there you go uh any any articles we need to be looking for uh in any of those wonderful publications um i have some pitches out right now there's some couple stories i'm working on for public source mm-hmm. uh for next pittsburgh and then some other outlets in town but uh just stay and tuned it, and again public source a a um a non-profit investigative investigative they're doing the deep dive stories that other people are not doing yeah they are one of i mean they're the only exclusively investigative outlet here in the city uh there are some good investigative reporters at the big dailies but public Mm -hmm. source this is their bread and butter and they keep i mean every story that they do just blows it out of the water i know that they just had a piece uh about greenwashing in Pittsburgh and how the city's sort of touting its environmental credentials, but maybe mm-hmm. it's not quite as green as they thought. And that was actually picked up by a national publication, I think City Lab, and they mm-hmm. referred back to it. So Public Source is doing, like you said, the deep dive into various uh, very important city issues, whether it's gentrification, whether it's uh, lead and water, whether it's uh, you know whatever it might be. They're the ones that are sort of really going in and telling you the full story behind what's happening. And, um, and of course, I also work with them. Actually, I'm working with them uh, in the morning. We're doing a stream at noon. There's going to be an interview uh, for that. We've done great things with uh, uh, the streams and, and deep interviews about, you know, a lot of these topics and mayoral candidates and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a really good group. And, again, uh, please, if you're interested in that kind of thing, one, be ready for deep reads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not quick blog stories like on The Verge or something like that that we we talk about on this show. And, uh, and, and, and please support them if you're interested in in that kind of uh, journalism, especially in the Pittsburgh area, too. And it's tax deductible because they are a nonprofit. There you go. So there you go. Publicsource.org. Check them out. Bonus. Katie Dudas. She is Katie Dudas on the Twitter. Yes. She I is. Uh, is a Scarehouse uh, podcast on hiatus still? No, or? it'll be back this week. <gasps> and then we have one for next week. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Podcast. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm heading to New Orleans tomorrow mm-hmm. for a few days for Hong Kong. So mm-hmm. I'm a, I'll probably I'm excited to do a Facebook Live with the new phone to see how that guy looks mm-hmm. because the old one looked kind of. I've been taking pictures at like poorly lit wrestling shows with my success. It's like, oh, I need to get this like as credit as soon as I can. <laughs> I do like it. Yeah, yeah. So but. I'm seeing your pictures. I was like, oh, I need to get a new phone. <laughs> You're seeing my pictures, which look like crap on my screen. That look amazing on every other oh, screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look great on the 6S, you know. <laughs> but then I watch a movie on the 6S. I'm like, oh, this looks fine enough. And I like take a picture. I was like, mm, yeah. nope, yeah. nope, not okay. Ah, uh, boy. Chilla, John Chichilla on the Twitter. Or Chilla on the Twitters. Chilla on the Twitters. John yes. Chichilla on the Facebooks. Yes. All your gadget, if you're interested in taking your home to the future, ask him questions. Yes, definitely. So, awesome. And, of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great podcasts, like the Scarehouse Podcast, the Awesome Cast, Wrestling Mayhem Show, Comic Book Pit. Shout out to them. They were actually here in the seat. I let other people sit here and do podcasts. I swear. Um, I can vouch for it. I saw it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, so uh, go check them out. They're there, there for a show from the studio. We'll be uh, up here in the coming days, I know. And uh, a lot of great stuff going on. The broadcast was just here uh, a few days ago. I had a lot of great interviews. Um, keep an eye on a few weeks. And I'm hoping we can get her, too, because we had the inventor of the fish fry map in here. Oh, cool. That works with CMU. And, um, oh, I can't remember the, the incline. I think is the incline published that the incline they may have written about it. Yeah, I think okay. they just kind of get it out yeah. there. But um, there's a code uh, group <laughs> that I can't. That's off the top of my head. I can't think of. But that 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 oh. kind of helps with that too. So hopefully we can get her. But we'll look out for that on uh, the broadcast as well. A great interview with that and a lot of other great guests that were in here this past weekend. Um, check out everything at awesomecast.com. Please support us at patreon.com/slash awesomecast if you like our brand of of podcasting uh, as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network.
Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.